Uh, it's Hughie Ho, and I really get excited to start this uh, episode. Uh, don't don't expect this one to be all the barrel of laughs, because I gotta be honest. Um, when I recorded it, you know, it wasn't one of the greatest days. Like, uh, what happened was, uh, so you know how it is in, in Ireland and Belfast at times, it can be pretty crazy. <clears throat> I was uh, traveling by bus, right, which was bad enough because it's a warm, sticky day. I'm stuck on a bus, I'm cracking up. So when I get off the bus, I see these uh, three thugs mugging this old woman. And uh, and I'm not trying to be like a tough guy or anything like that. So as soon as I seen that, I ran right over there. And I started throwing uh, punches, kicks, I was headbutting. And eventually uh, we got the purse off her. Oh! No, but really though, I really am uh, having a bad day. Um, it's been terrible. Uh, I've been accused of uh, violent assault of a minor at uh, an Ed Sheeran concert, and this is just complete character assassination because I would never go to see Ed Sheeran. Oh! So today we've got an old friend of mine, Paul. We're talking Rolling Stones. We've got the brilliant Tev pattern on. We're talking my history with Kevin Smith. We're talking O and A. We're talking Hard Stern, Gemernam. We're talking Z and Z, or is it Zion Z? Maybe it's Z and Z. Who gives a shit? He's hilarious. So let's get on with it. Hey, Paul, do you like the Rolling Stones? But I'm right, Paul. How's it going? All right, Adam. You're like the world is. You're the wildest, craziest guest I've ever had. All right, yeah. Here's what I was thinking. <laughs> What's your? You were talking about Rolling Stones for a little while. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, Rob, don't throw those bloody spears at me. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> are you doing making fun of my wife? All right. <laughs> so uh, you're a Rolling Stones fan? Well, I mean, yeah. Well, yes, I wouldn't call myself a uh, super fan, but I'm I'm a fan of sorts, I suppose. Well, that's, you, that's... Pro- you probably should have got someone on that actually knows about the Stones, because uh, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, but uh, <laughs> but the Stones are one of these bands where it's a lot like Queen, where people think they're not a fan, and then they can list thirty or forty songs that they love about them. Yeah, well, it was uh, it was tough whittling it down to the five, like oh, big time. But uh, did you did you get seeing them on like did you get grown to Crow Park there over the summer? Nah, well I seen them. I've seen them twice. Seen them in uh, what was it the the Lex tour or something back like two thousand two or something. Yeah, I seen them at Slane one year. I was I was I was like fuck two thousand five. Sorry, can I swear? Is that right? Yeah, fucking boobs, twat, funny. <laughs> <laughs> I've what? seen many of those on the road. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've seen them twice, uh, Slane and then O2 and uh, Dublin somewhere. I uh, when it used to be the point. Aye, uh, good crack, like. You know, I went. I went to see them there at the Crow Park this summer, and it was, it was amazing. But at the same time, <clears throat> like Charlie Watts is eighty-one. Eighty-one. No way. And he, and he, he, and I'm convinced that he's not actually playing drums live anymore. Because <laughs> it's just like he's sort of sitting there thinking. Can I have my soup now? <laughs> oh, while somebody in the background's playing the drums, and of course, Mix fucking still having it. Like he's like, uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. Charlie just wants his fucking kidney mush, doesn't he? Like <laughs> he wants to go home and watch Dad's Army and read the paper. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, when we were uh, at the Crow Park gig, Mick Jagger did this thing. Really, he's, he's got all the stage banter stuff. Yeah, and he goes, he goes. Hello, Dublin! He goes, is anyone here from Belfast? <laughs> and then he says, every time I'm in Dublin, I have a spice bag. What? And it's like, yeah, you do, Mick, because you look like you eat chips. <laughs> you know, no, a spice bag, apparently it's some famous Dublin uh, cuisine thing where it's like a, a chippy mixed with a, ch- a Chinese stir fry. What? Yeah. That's pretty good, like. But I don't see Mick Jagger eating that. It's like, oh, no, it comes. It's good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the uh, they love their, their bags of chips in Dublin. Yeah. Bag of chips, you know. 
Although I think I think when uh, Keith got this what the spice bag, he said, "This is what you call spice." <laughs> Where's a bloody coke dog bag? <laughs> Shall we go into the top fives? Let's do it. Why don't you start yourself with your top with your number five? <laughs> okay, number five. Uh, bits from Sticky Fingers. Hmm. It's kind of. Um, it's just a really good riff. It's like. I think they actually probably ripped it off. Well, like they ripped a lot of their stuff off, I guess, from the old blues shit. But it's like, uh, it's from, it might be some from some Motown song or something, you know, like it's like, dun, 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 dun. it's like, oh, get you know it if you heard it again. Like it's, it's, uh, it's just, it's quality. Like, and Jagger's just on top form. He's doing the like, uh, uh, Yeah, yeah. My number five. It's got to be uh, Hands of Fate from the album uh, Black and Blue. From It's the one that came out in the late 70s. Yeah! Sweet. Do you like the late 70s uh, Stones? But, but see, that's that's the weird thing about the Rolling Stones. The first, like, I always knew that had this, all these songs and albums for years. But um, the, when I got into them, it was through compilation albums. Yeah. So I, I never really knew what era the, the songs came from, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And they got 40 Licks uh, compilation and the Hot Rocks, that was a good one as well. Oh, yeah. But this this album, uh, Black and Blue, apparently this was them at the peak of their drug abuse. And you can actually hear, I'm not even kidding you, on this song. Because, see, this is back when they recorded all the songs, like, analog to tape. Yeah. And you can actually hear Mick at one point singing, is it, A hand to fight over there. <laughs> and you can actually hear him doing the because he's because he's because he's you know that bag, isn't he? Ah, yes. Okay, for you, love me. I'll be coming on the live cat guy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, what's your number four? <laughs> number four is Dear Doctor from Beggar's Banquet. Ooh. More like sort of they went sort of. um more rootsy in that album. I think it was like more like folky ish bl- blues, more Delta blues or something, if you like. You know, like like a lot of acoustic guitars and stuff. I, actually, Sympathy for the Devil, I think, is on that one, maybe. But um, the rest of the album is a bit more stripped down, I guess. Yeah. But it's cool. Like, you, know, you know, for a non, uh, for, for someone who doesn't think they're a big Rolling Stones fan, that, those are two pretty, uh, well, two album tracks. Is that's that's yeah. not. Yeah, I, I guess. My number four, it's got to be Miss You from the absolutely brilliant album Some Girls. Nice. I was walking down the street. <laughs> What's about it with you, man? <laughs> I got some Puerto Rican girls in the sun to make you. I made the best one. I'm doing things that we used to. I, I love that, uh, you know, whenever Jagger Jagger does the vocals like that there, and he doesn't even finish the what he's saying. This is like, <laughs> he doesn't have to. It's just it's so good. Like that, That's even what he's like. Now, all he has to do is sort of grunt in time to the song, and it works. <laughs> and everyone's like just throwing the money at them. Like, yes, yes. Take our money, yeah. What, what was he like? Uh, or what, what were they like at the... The last gig you seen, seen them at good. Oh, they were brilliant, amazing. The, the only thing, uh, the the set list was very predictable though. Did they start with uh, "Start Me Up" or "Sympathy for the Devil"? Ah, uh, yes. Which was, uh, which I'm not even kidding you. Uh, the day earlier that day, we were drinking. I like a drink. Uh, they, I predicted <laughs> that randomly. <laughs> That's that is amazing, the amazing hues. You know what I've got a habit of doing, and when I say a habit, I mean this happened once about seven years ago. <laughs> I predicted uh, three songs in a row on my iPod Shuffle. That's fucking unreal. What were they? Can't remember. <laughs> Probably uh, two unlimited, uh, no limits. Then a live version of No Limits, and then the extended uh, version of No Limits played live. That's fucking uncanny. Like, and it's and it's 
And it's easy to predict the uh, three songs when you when you get four songs on the on the fucking iPod. Yeah, that's uh, what are the odds, eh? What what are your number three? That's that's the, <laughs> what's your number three? <laughs> that's not that's not his name, is it, mate? Uh, number three under my thumb. Oh, Aftermath. it's so good. Like it's because uh, I um before I actually sort of got into them, I had my, my dad had that compilation uh, Hot Rocks. And that was on it, and I always, always loved them. Older, that's I think that's from like the mid sixties or something. I can't remember, like sixty five, sixty six or something. But uh, yeah, all them ones and like um, I'll not, I'll not ruin any other ones in case you have them coming up. But like you know, all that fucking era, it's all good, like. But ironically, uh, under my thumb was used as the opener for a lot of their big uh, stadium gigs in the eighties. Class. Yeah, it's a weird choice, like, but it's a. Uh, it's a brilliant song. Like I'd go mad for it. Yeah, it's just um, again, it, it all just clicks so well together. Like the uh, the vocal again, and then there's like the instrumentation is just fucking top notch. Like so good. And the math fan. Well, what about you? What's number three? Uh, tumbling dice. Nice. I absolutely. Th- this is one of these songs that uh, it's almost like I can't get sick of it. Yeah. Where uh, it's like because a, a lot of their classics, I think, are played out. Yeah, I know, and, I know. And it's like, like it's not that they're bad songs. Like I love Satisfaction, and I love uh, Start Start Me Up and Jumpin' Jack Flash. But yeah, I've yeah. heard them a million times. Yeah, it's weird. Like you know, do not think one song that I. See, I probably like a lot of songs, but I've just heard them too many times. You know, like, for example, I don't know, fucking Welcome to the Jungle, right? Mm. I've probably heard that song fucking more times than I've listened to songs that I really like. You know what I mean? Just because it's been on the radio or some shit. But it's kind of, I don't even know if I like it anymore because I've heard it that many times. You know, something like that, I guess. It's uh, it's a bit, uh, bit shit. But that's kind of like I went to the uh, the Joshua Tree YouTube Stadium tour last summer, and as much as much as good laugh a good time as I had at the gig because like no Gallagher was support act. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it was kind of like those Joshua Tree songs were already played out, and now you're going to see the album being played in full. It was <laughs> and it was kind of it was a weirdly <laughs> dull stadium show, you know. Really? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I seen oh. I seen your Instagram, yeah. You're oh good. yeah, oh yeah. Good though, was it was it good that seeing them play the whole album? Like it, it was and it wasn't, but uh, I'd, I'd rather them start pre- playing more stuff from the nineties. I love all that nineties U two stuff. Yeah, yeah. So what's your number two? Number two is the last time. Oh, from out of our heads. I love that one. Uh, yeah, it's a kind of that. I think they wrote that one. You know what? Nowhere in that time they still did like a lot of covers and, and stuff. But that one just the uh, it kicks in straight away with the the guitar line like down 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 class like it's all all everything about that song's good. Oh, that no, the last time it's this cute and and the, that was that was from the sixties, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, 60s, yeah. No, I, I love that one. Yeah, my number two, and uh, I don't even know if most people know this one. Uh, She's So Cold from the Emotional Rescue album in the mid-80s. Cool. It's right. The thing is, because I'm so happy that she's so... I said, it's just one of those ones that once you hear it, and it's Mick Jagger, I think he was at his best in the 80s. Really? So, okay. And the, the weird reason is, if you see the video for this, the video for She's So Cold, it was a single, he's got pupils like this here. <laughs> Was it? I'm so happy. It's so cold. Is that uh, the same uh, period he did? Uh, what is it? Dancing in the street with boy era? Was it? <laughs> do you know? Uh, yeah, yeah die. Him and boy just fucking rocking up with the trench coats. Um, like two absolute lords. We we don't mean to die. You want to do a song? We said, I'll do a song with you. <laughs> But uh, do, do you know? Apparently, they recorded that song and record, and then made that amazing music video on the same day. <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, both both after they off their tits, like. 
I mean, it doesn't show at all because it's because it's so you know, it's so uh, you know layered and artistic. Yeah, I'm gonna do nothing where he goes. <laughs> Why? Fuck's sake! So, uh, what's your number one Rolling Stone song? All right. Well, this is the reason I picked this one is because it's from my favorite album of theirs, and I don't know. Just, just it's my favorite song. I can't describe it. Uh, Shake your hips from Exile on Main Street. It's just fucking great. You know, it's what what's so good about the song is that it has hardly any instruments in it and it's really like sparse. Mm. But it, it just kicks ass and Jagger's vocal is amazing. Like it's just he, he just there's a there's a certain point where he like the energy picks up and then the song goes along with his vocal, you know, it just like ebbs and flows. It's so good, like. Do you think he's an underrated singer? He, I mean, technically, he's he's not amazing, but he um, he has a lot of character in his voice, and he just you know for all the running about on stage he does, you know, to to keep it together and still be able to sing in tune is is amazing. Like, and and then I suppose because his voice has always been bad, we never notice him doing a bad game. <laughs> But he, he so that's why that's why we love him because he has character, you know. He's not he's not fucking one of these warbly pop singers, like. Yeah, it's he's hard. From the, he's from the streets, man. Not me either. Carnation streets, probably. <laughs> so the all important moment that we've all waited for uh, from the wildest, craziest punk band of all time. My number one favorite Rolling Stone song of all time. Is from 1994. It's "Love Is Strong" from the album nice. Blue Lounge. Nice. That's that song is just. And they see the problem is they they don't play it live at all anymore, because pretty much what the Rolling Stones do now is they'll bring out a new album and they'll play that new stuff on that tour, and then after that the new stuff or that album is never played again and it's back to the 70s and 60s shit. Yeah. No. So, good pick, like. But I, I just love, and it just shows you how, uh, like, it's probably their their coolest song, like the most the song with the most swagger, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's Jagger, the, like Jagger. The videos, the and they're like giants or something, isn't it? That's is that the one I'm thinking of? They're in the yeah, yeah, city. yeah, cool. You know who directed that one? Hit me, I don't know. David Fincher. Ah, oh, right. He went on to do like Fight Club and the Social Network and and all. Yeah. Sweet, I didn't know that. That's good. Interesting. So that's, so that's my I uh, my top five is hand of fate. Ah, uh, shit. Oh, I forgot already. <laughs> well, I'll add it down. Yeah, I should. I suppose you shouldn't have been deleting the list as it was on it. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Sweet. Do you want your uh, any social media or any anything plugged in it? Just plug the band, I guess. We're we're not really doing a whole lot at the minute, but. Parappa Palace. Just uh, keep shouting that every five minutes. Not you really. You have uh, social media? Okay. Yeah. yeah, we've got uh, Facebook and all that shit. Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> yeah. It's Hughie Hello, and there's a lot of people have asked me, you know, why I actually create this podcast? Why I get into this sort of stuff? And my whole thing is really because, well, frankly, you never know if it's going to be a success or not, so I thought it was worth the risk. And people have said to me, well, what's your long-term plans? Well, eventually I'd love to be able to like interview people on this, like people who I'm genuinely fans of, like heroes of mine. Like I'd love to be able to interview Sylvester Stallone. Uh, love to be able to interview Bruce Willis. Uh, love to be able to interview Robert Downey Jr. That would be like a dream thing. Uh, and not just that, like then you get your sports athletes like Eric Cantona. Love to interview Mike Tyson. Uh, Anthony Joshua would be great. Conor McGregor. Uh, and then, of course, there's your wrestlers. There's a love to be The Rock, Hulk Hogan, uh, Jericho, all, all the usuals. Then, you know, a lot of music fans as well. Like, there's a lot of people I like, such as uh, love to interview Dr. Dre. Love to interview Bruce Springsteen. I'd love to interview Noel Ga... So I thought I was getting a, a Google Hangout caller. I'd love to interview Noel Gallagher. Love to interview Liam Gallagher. 
Uh, and of course, the dream one would be Axel Rose, but that's that's probably the least likely of them all. But I'd love to interview. Uh, hang on, me try this. Is a Google call here? Hey, you did. I heard you wanted to interview me. Wait a minute, is that Bruce Springsteen? Yeah, it's Bruce Springsteen. You know me? Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan. It's like we're the heart stopping, pants dropping, house rocking, earth quaking, booty shaking. Viagra taking, love making, legendary E Street Band. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard of you. I've, I've heard of you. I'm a big fan. I've seen you live many times. So, Husey, where are you from? Um, Ireland. Oh, that's where you two comes from. Get on your boots. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, that's not one of my uh, favorite you two songs, but yeah, I'm a big fan of them too. So, where do you usually listen to our music? Uh, well, well, for me, I, I uh, listen to it um, when I'm working out, mostly, Bruce. What do you mean, hitting the weights and stuff there, boy? No, uh, well, I can't really do that anymore. I have two bad shoulders, so I usually do it when I'm doing cardio. Hey, I guess you could say you're born to run. Yeah, yeah. See, the joke there is that I have a song called Born to Run and an album. Get it? Yeah, I do get it, but... Uh, Love that album, love that song. Heard you play it live many times. So what do you wear when you're working out? Uh, just like a t-shirt and shorts and stuff. Uh, you know, nothing, <laughs> nothing unique. Quite to ask. Do you get sweaty? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because you know you run for about an hour, hour and a half. You tend to sweat loads. Do you take a soapy shower after the workout? Yeah, yeah. Do you get soap up your ass and on your cock and balls? Um. Okay, Bruce, uh, thanks for calling in. I'll have to speak to you later. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody else on that list but Bruce Springsteen, I'd like to interview. Welcome to the uh, It's Usually Hello Tef pattern. Hello, hey. What are, what are the chances that your surname would be pattern and your profile picture would be of a test pattern, eh? That's fucking insane. <laughs> right, Bruce. it was back uh, when the Teft meme was huge. I don't yeah. know if you remember that. It's probably yeah. like two weeks. People were doing photoshops and everything, and then uh, it kind of got dead, and now I'm just stuck with it. But that's one of the problems with the Jim and Sam show or that whole brand these days is that nothing sticks. Like, there's no running joke. There's nothing. Yeah, there's – there's yeah, it's – I don't know. What do you think of the show lately? Uh, honestly, uh, I only ever catch about five minutes of it on uh, 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 Zane's live stream. And okay, yeah. And it's awful. Like uh, J Jimmy is obviously very safe about his career, so he's not pushing his luck with the uh, the humor. And and Sam is seems like a, a guy he would be good to go for a drink with, but not to host the host of radio show. <laughs> you can with Jim. You can hear it in real time as they're talking, like the politics or like the latest Trump, whatever. You can hear him trying to find a way to give an opinion where both sides of his audience, because he's got that, like, tranny or, like, all those kind of people on one side, and then he's got, like, the truckers and, like, the Trump guys, and he'll be trying to, like, figure out a way to just sit on the fence but still give an opinion. It's just, uh, it's bad. Uh, <laughs> I don't like that, it. There's that brilliant footage of him up on uh, Bay's Frequencies channel, and you can visibly see him uh, having an anxiety attack because he's, he's twitching like this, and he's... All the people are speaking, so you can actually see him trying to deal with uh, anxiety. And it's like, mate, just have a wank in the toilet and come back. <laughs> Do you know what wank yeah. is in America? Do a uh, wank? Oh yeah, we 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 wank here. It's jerking up, brother. <laughs> yeah, we do some wanking. Oh no, I do some wanking. <laughs> I know. You said you were just whacking off to a Denzel interview before this. No, no, I was actually uh, donating to charity. It just seemed that way. It was a spelling mistake. No one can prove me anything. <laughs> by the way, happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, uh, every day. By the way, you know the best day of the year in Ireland is St. Patrick's Day? And do you know the worst day of the year? What? The morning after on the toilet of St. Patrick's Day. It will oh. fuck. It's like, it's like <laughs> the surface of the sun is in your, uh, let's just say, 
Uh, arse. Yeah. <laughs> I've had some rough St. Patrick's days. I've oh. had one where, like, we did this, like, nine to noon thing. Just drink as much as you can, jello shots and all that. Mm. And I got back, and I was like, I was with my cousins, and my family was there for dinner and everything. And I, like, fell asleep while I passed out on the toilet. And they were like, what the hell? Like, where is he? My fucking parents had to come in and like, get me up as I'm on the fucking toilet. This really happened. It was it was embarrassing. It was bad. I've done the thing where it's like you, you drink one pint of Guinness, then you pick up your empty and you <laughs> into it and place it there. And you, but you, know, <laughs> you knew me on YouTube from back during the, the Kevin Smith uploading days. Actually, I've seen you on YouTube since like probably 2009. It's way, way back. Yeah, yeah. Because you were around when I had this other channel called Sound Tribe. And it was like oh. a tiny little channel. Like, it wasn't a regular upload sort of thing. But, um, yeah, yeah. It was like way, way back. And I remember seeing you around. You did a lot of ONA stuff. And then you switched to, like, Kevin Smith and a couple other podcasts. Like, you kind of branched out. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. So... And then I remember one time I did watch like all of your Kevin Smith videos, like all of the feuds and everything. I just find it interesting. Uh, see, see the Kevin Smith. I don't know if it was him specifically or somebody working for them. They totally fucked me. Really? Yeah, because I had a thing where uh, obviously I was uploading clips as a fan, and they and frankly, yeah. that, that channel was getting huge. Like on a bad day, I was getting like eighty, ninety thousand views. That's just in the day. Holy shit. So I get an email by some whoever ran his channel and they said, Listen, this is we're officially giving you permission and I have the email still saved. They says you have the permission to upload as much as you want. Just link to our website and link to uh the trailer to whatever his latest film or release was at the time. Nice. That's kinda nice of them actually. Well, we'll hear the next uh. story. So it yeah. got to the point where uh, the channel was like getting really big, and I had something like forty to forty-five thousand subscribers. Yeah, um, I, I started and I got monetized. So I started yeah. making money, and the first check was for, like seven hundred dollars and yeah, well, pound. And I was like, oh shit, seven hundred. Then next <laughs> you're getting one thousand and two thousand every month for like a year. Then I get a check for four thousand dollars, and I'm thinking, "Oh shit, this must be a mistake." Holy month, fuck! Yeah, month after that, seven thousand four hundred dollars, and I'm like, and I'm thinking, "Well, I'm going to quit my job. This is this is yeah. going to be my job. I'm going to hire someone to listen yeah. to the podcasts, and they can do those clips, and I'll do this full time." And then yeah. the next month they terminated me. I got like forty. And I was like, and I was like, but I had permission. So yeah, I, yeah. So I thought, oh well, this would be a mistake. So I, I tried again, and uh, they shut me down in about two seconds, all the way, all over again. I thought, fuck wow. him. But then at the same time, uh, it was his stuff. But yeah, did you ever email that person back and say like, hey, hey you, they took me down. Like, can you do something about this? Yeah, I sent them. I sent them that their exact their exact email, and they just never replied. And I I think what it was was um, they never realized how huge it was going to get. Yeah. So when Kevin Smith started his own uh, channel, uh, uh. They, they went for that. But I've I've got to say the weird thing is, uh, I still listen to his podcast and podcasts and stuff, but he's not as popular as he once was. Yeah. So, he kind of has sort of. Yeah, and his channel, despite being a Hollywood guy, it's really not that yeah. big. Yeah. Well, he doesn't need to do everything off on his own website. He does podcasts and all that. He's got like a whole network. Does he still have that network? Yeah, yeah. But the thing okay. is, see, well, he pissed a lot of fans off with because he's one of these, not to get off on a Kumi around, but he's a, he's a no, Hollywood liberal. Cool. Yes, yeah. And it's like, Everything is sexist and racist, and everything's says, "Oh, oh!" Like he said a quote where he goes, "Oh, I shouldn't be directing uh, Supergirl uh, because of my gender," and it's like, "So you can fly, and you're from an alien planet, 
but the fact that your man is the problem is like shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know he went down that road. Oh god. That sucks. And then the spent but now I, uh, because of his heart attack and shit, he's he's way he's all like peace and love and I love everything and nobody wants to hear that shit. Yeah, it's just not it's not funny. Yeah. It's it's just yeah, like you need to be I mean like that is sort of again like a Kumia Jim Norton sort of rant sort of thing, but you need to be kind of like angry at the world a little bit, I think, to actually be funny. Like you gotta have some like chip on your shoulder. What's that? Yeah. That? <laughs> <laughs> I really should have saw what? that coming. Or a fucking chip on your shoulder, buddy, or a fucking bag of chips or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, fucking an Irish chip. That's fucking crazy and shit. <laughs> or like potato chip. <laughs> <laughs> The face. So, uh, do you get a lot of shit on your YouTube uh, by the copyright shit, or are you uh, all cool? No, yeah. I really haven't. One time, I got one time fucking Bob Kelly. I was watching their live stream, and they had Colin on, and it was about some sort of drama. I can't remember what it was about, but so like they do a live stream on like Wednesday, and then they upload it on Sunday. But because I was watching, I just skipped back a little bit, and I recorded this clip, like. uh six seven minutes where they were addressing the thing that everyone wanted to hear them address and then like two days later fucking bob kelly's like internet service flagging service took it down and so i was like like i was like god damn like i was i was not pissed but i was like they you know can i get to bob and like fix this or whatever can i at least get the flag taken off my channel because i had uploaded so many white kwd before that so I, I got on Twitter and I was doing all this stuff and then he DMs me and he goes, call me like he gives me a phone number to call him. So I was like, all right, like, I guess I'll, I'll try that. So I called him up and he was like saying all this stuff about how, uh, um, you know, like, oh, you know, we need that clip and that's kind of a big deal for us. Like we kind of need the traffic and for you to upload it, it kind of screws us, but it's not a big deal. Like we, so I asked him at the end, I was like, can I get, can you get the strike removed? And he was like, yeah, sure, buddy. Sure. Like we'll, we'll, we'll get that thing care of. Never took it off. Never got the strike off. I, I, I DM'd him again. I tried to like post on their channel. Like, uh, yeah, Hey, they didn't take the clip off or the flag off. Cause you get it. And just no response. So I had trouble with that. And then the people's court with Ron Bennington, they took that one down too. Where, where Ron Bennington watched the brother Joe, people's court episode but i did the video with it there's lots of pauses and stuff like technically of course yeah it is ron bennington serious xm copyright but that's still if they're going to let me put it on the channel i think it's still kind of fair use in a way where they're pausing this clip and there's you know i made it smaller i sort of changed it but i didn't even bother trying to appeal it because it's just like it can be a hassle mm. but so just those two but I think that the like uh, I only realized the other day because you know that channel, uh, Logan the Highest Primate or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I just I just noticed the other day really well he hasn't uploaded in a while because I know that yeah, he is. said something on Twitter that his dad's going through some you know tough shit. Yeah. So I thought well obviously he's the, it's, his fucking channel's been terminated. Oh my god again. Yeah. He's had that happen so many times, but that's the only thing Sirius seems to go after is channels that upload full shows every single day on time. Mm. With my channel, like that guy Derek, he used to be the producer for Jim and Sam. He like added me on Twitter and shit. Like they followed me on Twitter with their Jim and Sam channel. So I almost took that as like a okay, like I'm guessing. I'm kind of fine in terms of like not getting flagged, but you never know. I always kind of think like there'll be one day I'll check it and it'll just be gone. It's my, my, that's one of the reasons why I, uh, on my channel right now, there's nothing, no clips from anyone because I it was giving me mm. a lot of stress. I just thought, right, fuck it. I, I don't want to have to be like, so I went to see Ant Man 2 and the whole time I'm thinking, what's, I bet you if I come out here, I'm going to check my emails. 70 copyright strikes for taking you to court. <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore. 
I can't risk getting grey hair. Look at how good looking I am. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. I was nice Irish blue eyes. Look <laughs> at you. <laughs> Irish blue eyes. I've got the Irish uh, bad heart. I've got the Irish uh, limp. You know, it's all great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there was one guy, there was a guy who got taken to court he, by the PGA, by a golf, because he just kept uploading these compilations, didn't really do anything other than add clips together, and he would appeal and retract, and he'd kind of, like, abuse the copyright back, and he did this for years, and finally they were just like, we're just going to sue him. Like, it was down in Florida. I don't know how it turned out. You know what, uh, what I, I was reading this article, but what set the whole YouTube copyright thing off? Well, it was two things, actually. Uh, one, YouTube apparently got a mass lawsuit put against them by record companies. Oh, wow. Because there's so many, because like, you don't even have to join iTunes or Tidal or anything. You could just copy copy the links off YouTube and MP3, the fucking things. Yep. yep. And on top of that, in India, they have these click farm things. So you could upload a video that was over 10 minutes, put like seven ads on it. They would, uh, then you could send it to one of these click farm companies and in the morning it would have like 400,000 views and you've just made like $14,000 in a day. Oh, holy shit. Yeah, so you, and YouTube realized, wait, although there's like smaller channels making like $800, this guy's making about 100,000 a month from oh, one. Oh, yeah. So they, they, <laughs> The goddamn Indians ruined it all first, God damn it! <laughs> you heard about that whole thing with the kids shows, right? Where they were putting like really fucked up things into kids' cartoons on YouTube, and like, uh, yeah, it was weird. Like they they'd be like um, Princess, whatever that one from Frozen is, the Princess Elsa, I think. They'd be like Princess Elsa becomes Spider Man's slave for a day. And they'll show, like, Princess Elsa, like, BDSM, like, on the ground, on her knees with, like, the thing around. And, like, Spider-Man's, like, holding her. It got, it was weird. And they were putting this stuff. It was getting through to the YouTube Kids app. And that thing just auto-plays. So you, you give it to your kid, and they're just watching it for an hour or two. And it's just random videos are coming up. And so they were, like, kids were just getting subjected to this stuff. Like, it was very very strange it was either coming out of india or russia one of those two but it was it's some weird stuff i think some of the channels still kind of like hang around they tried to clean it up but people knew about it for like a year and youtube was doing nothing till finally they kind of were forced to it made the mainstream news and all that yeah there's some weird shit on youtube that's for sure one of the best things on YouTube at the minute is that base frequency, a base frequency documentary channel. Oh yeah, that, I amazing! Was I was watching that part four last night. There's a yeah. lot of stuff he mentioned about Ant that I've never uh, heard before. Oh, uh, yeah, a lot of it was through like the Reddit and everything. He Anthony, it all went wrong when Anthony. He was getting a lot of shit for the Danny, you know, the Danny tape, the Periscope tape with Danny and all that. Mm. He was getting tons of shit, just getting roasted every day for that. And then about because that was in December and sometime around February or March of that year, he got on and he was like, so I finally got some personal information about this guy. He works at Panera Bread. All He starts going into all this stuff. And he was like, if like if this keeps up. I'm just going to release all of his personal information. Like he was kind of threatening to do that. And then after that, it just went like, it was just like war. Like people were digging through all of Anthony's stuff. And that's how those vine posts showed up and the Sioux lightning and everything. It was crazy. The thing that I find so crazy about this whole thing is that out of all of the feuds and all the bad mouth and Opie's kind of coming out as sort of the winner. <laughs> right. Like, right. Anthony on Twitter is more like Anthony Kumia. Am I right? <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, Jim, Jim uh, like not that I don't find him funny. Like I think he's hilarious, but mm -hmm. if he, if he's trying really hard to become Instagram famous. And I love Jim Norton, Ooh. but it's, like, it's yeah, because he's blogging. He's like, hey, I'm just having a juice. Got to go to the gym. Get back there later. And it's like, who gives a shit? 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't they, know that. And then Ob- Obi, like everybody makes fun of Obi, but it's like he's a multi-millionaire who works one day a week for about an hour. He's doing yeah. okay. Yeah, he saved all his money. I mean, he's got two kids. He's got that apartment. He's got like some house in Long Island. But other than that, like he just pocketed all that money. And Anthony's off to like uh, fucking Atlantic City and like other trips, flying girls in and like all this stuff. Anthony is spends his money like crazy. So I imagine if you check both of their bank accounts and all their like net worth, I think uh, Opie's probably got them by a lot. Yeah, I, I doubt Anthony's <clears throat> in uh, in uh, eight figures anymore. <laughs> he's he's only right. seven figures. How's he going to sleep at night? Well? Right. I have heard, however, that um, I heard from somebody who was going to, and I got to be careful too because like they were under an NDA, but they said that basically a lot of people think Anthony's network is doing really, really bad. Uh, like he, he's almost on the brink of shutting down or losing the studio and he might go bankrupt, but I've heard that it's like not even like that at all. It's like they're doing way, way better than most people think. I think that Anthony's whole network would be doing better if he took away the video version and just made it, a, if he did like a free audio version. Because yeah. I yeah. don't know anyone who's watching that video stuff. <laughs> yeah, it can be kind of rough. Even like, because eventually the plan I want to do with this podcast is mm-hmm. once it's more of a following, I'm going to do uh, the audio version with music bass, uh, music, with music boards underneath it. This, this, like, right now I'd be playing something like, I don't know, the best of REM, our favorite. <laughs> Big REM fan. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> so, nothing, Everybody nothing like, hurts. Nothing like, Doing four lines of coke, drinking a pint of whiskey, and then headbanging into some losing my religion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's that's for Thursday night. You know, they're Irish, right? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> you know who's Irish? You you know Snow Patrol. I fucking hate Snow Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> really? They're they're from a place here uh, called Banger. Okay. But so it sounds like it's like well, that sounds like where Andrew Dice Clay needs to record his next live album. Ah, uh, right. Oh, we're right. Like, we're, Banger, I barely know her. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, see the thing about uh, Dice and Chip. They're, mm-hmm. they're the kind of voices that it's better to never learn how to do them because you're never going to stop doing them or something. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> we have this, <laughs> it's just chip dice. There's got to be a way to combine that. This fucking chick in the bank was all like, "Oh, your pack is big," and I said, "Oh, <laughs> oh." <Yeah. laughs> we have this. Um, we have this guy in uh, Discord. I don't know if you know what Discord is. It's like a thing where it's just like you talk and stuff like that. But there's also the voice channels. We got this guy in Discord who. The drunker he gets, the longer his chip jokes get. And once it's over like eight, ten seconds, like it's like a fucking monologue. And it's like, dude, chip, the punchline's not going to be good because it's chip, but it's like this much setup to get to it. Oh my God. But yeah, he, he's a good man. I've just come up with a chip Discord joke if you want to hear it. Oh, go ahead. Hey, if I can <laughs> ask me, uh, hey, chip, are you on Discord? Uh, chip, are you on Discord? No, I'm on Discord. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I was pulled out. Mm-hmm. I was talking to Zian about this, and I was thinking, do you ever get the feeling that the Opie and Anthony feud is fake? I don't think it's fake necessarily. I don't think that they go and they go talk about it like behind the scenes. They don't call each other and say like. All right, let's let's get this going. But I do think that they consciously understand that it's going to increase both their traffic. It's going to like make more people come to their Twitters and get more back into the show. And if these guys go too long, because none of them exactly are superstars on their own, they're kind of like uh, you ever watch Power Rangers when you were a kid? Fuck yeah! Yeah, they're like the Megazord. 
like together they are they are the the fucking huge ass thing that can just kill anything and be great but apart from each other they're just like shitty weird looking cars that just have missing the rest of it so it's like they they if they go too long without drama and without anything to bring people back in i think they all start stagnating and lose viewers and all that and so they kind of need to do this every now and then I, I can update that reference to uh, the Expendables. So oh, right. Nobody wants to see the new Dolph Lundgren film, but then Expendables 4 comes out. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's just about right. What did you think of the new uh, Power Rangers film that came out? Was it last year? I didn't see it. I'm so behind on movies. The, I, I wouldn't say rush to see this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, was, it was honestly like they wanted to click all the boxes of you know being a uh, of of diversity man. Oh, uh, of course, yeah. It's, it's like everyone like so you've got the black special needs guy, the Hispanic, uh, <laughs> you've got the the white straight guy, the bisexual whatever kind of girl, and then there's the oh. the tough funny Asian guy who's bisexual and vegan and a dwarf and transsexual. And he can time travel, and he's got perfect hair, and it's like, it's like, yeah, where's the fucking dinosaur? Oh, yeah, they did that to it. Oh, that's that's sad. Speaking of uh, no, but with oh, Obi and Anthony, I, I've sort of uh-huh. onto the fact that that uh, like Anthony's got his book coming out, and it just so happens that that's the week that Obi starts bashing him on his podcast. So that gives mm. Matt the whole show material gives Opie. Opie's now going into the studio. So now he's going to need more listeners to bring up the money. And uh, I just think it's a uh, yeah. you sketched out. Yeah, it's a it's a completely reasonable suspicion. But but it I, I don't know. I mean, they really do genuinely seem to not like each other. Like it seems so genuine to me. If if they didn't, if, I feel like they would have done something by now. Like Opie would have come in and seen Anthony or something. So they really like go deep with trashing each other. Like on a serious, like if I was one of them getting trashed the way that they do by the other, like I'd be. I don't know if I'd be cool with it. Like it, like they go hard on each other. But see that sometimes to me, in a way, it's kind of like a, a comedy roast where it's like, oh, we could bury. Taft, but we can't make fun of just like like now just don't mention the family, don't make fun of uh relatives or whatever. So mm. I think the unofficial agreement because they they mm. I'm pretty sure they have some form of contact. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't be amazingly surprised if it came out like leaked somehow that they were faking it. I mean it's just it's questionable because you're right, the timing is pretty interesting. It's like because I'm um, I'm a big wrestling fan, and uh-huh. and it, it, it's if uh, if somebody isn't working for WWE, they'll start uh, talking crap about oh uh, uh, John Cena is a dick. If I ever seen him in real life, I'd kick his arse. Yeah. Shockingly, four months later, that same wrestler then gets signed by WWE and attacks John Cena, and you go, yeah. He, so basically, he was already signed. He already knew he was coming back. And it was they built it. I think that. <laughs> I, I've been working all the black guys, brother. I said all kinds of stuff, and it was all for people you draws. And uh, I mean, brother. <laughs> Speaking of uh, complete loonies, do you want to hear uh, Zane's <laughs> stuttering John impression? Absolutely, I have not heard it before. I fucking laughed my arse off when he did this. It comes towards the end here, so I'll press play now. Okay, lips in, but yeah, yeah, you blocked me. So uh, <laughs> fuck you, you stuttering prick. And uh, yeah, your podcast stinks, John. I mean, you had the one oh. interesting thing where Trump actually called you back. And you, oh boy, you're huh. still trying to suck off that fucking two seconds of fame, aren't you, stupid? Oh, I got the president to call. I got the president to call. I <laughs> the commander chief called my cell phone. You fucking dumb, stupid fuck. Uh, black huh. man on Twitter, you fucking stuttering bitch. Fuck you. Oh, Jesus Christ. 
Good God, I didn't know all that ha happened. Oh, with God. Him. That, see, Zane, I, I almost want to move to America to <laughs> just to follow him about because I honestly think he probably watched <laughs> around all day going, hey, nice to meet you. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. He, he like, remember that Eddie Murphy joke of he, uh, Zane is the fuck you, man? Like, yeah. Zane, fuck you. Uh, I, had, I had a huge thing with him, but we're pretty cool now. He has We're uh, good now. That guy, Zane, uh, the thing I, I think so funny about him is he's nuts, but he's really witty. Y yeah, he his ability to just fucking plow through, like, you cannot insult him and get to him. Like, he just doesn't give a fuck. He just plows through. He will basically rope adult people because they'll just keep trying to get to him like, and insult him and get back at him. And he just doesn't give a fuck. He just barrels through it and just, you know, like, yo, you motherfucker, you work at Burger King, all this shit. I'm I'm getting rich off O and A. It's fucking great. Who cleaned up the piss? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> that's the mystery. It didn't seem like he was going over to fetch them up. Oh no. No, yeah, he, he left it there. Which which I don't know. Maybe maybe it was in a bucket. Maybe it was. You know how some basements have that little drain thing in case there's a like a flood or something. They got that little indent. Maybe he went right for that. Just sniped it. I don't know. The thing about Zane that's amazing is um, I I really want to I want to see footage of him because all we ever see is this amount of his face. Yeah, yeah. And I've right. never seen him. If he, is he tall? Is he short? Uh, as he can he walk? <laughs> we know he can stand and pee. Yeah, because but the other thing I find fascinating is why doesn't like why doesn't he mix the drink in the same glass? Because he does this instead. Yeah, yeah, he likes that chaser, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but that that guy, his stuff with Jim and Am, it's just, yeah, <laughs> that 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 Jim and Am guy though. He's uh, what's going on with him? He, I, I don't know how I, uh, see, I felt bad for him until I heard him making fun of that lady for a Sunday, and I thought that was so far beyond uh, yeah. a, a food, you know, that that was just like, if, if you did that in Ireland, you would get your, what we would call the uh, kneecapped. Yeah, 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 fucking bash with a patty stick. Oh, God, yeah, but that, for, see, uh, Jim and I, I think, see, the, the problem was, you can't be a hard stern guy in uh, 2018. That's, that's like reviewing the latest v uh, VHS releases. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. I mean, even right. if you look at hard stern's YouTube, it's it's really low considering it's hard stern. Like no one cares yeah. about it. Yeah, it's just it's ET now. It's entertainment tonight. Like all of this stuff. He's so scared about getting in trouble and having his past dug up on him that it's like he. He really just went so strict with the way that he does radio that it's like there's no edge to it anymore. It's it's just kind of boring. But the, the thing about with Stern that, that sort of ruined it for me as a fan is that it makes me think, was he always fake? Like, was he only outrageous in the late 80s and 90s because that was the cool thing? I Well, there's I'm not sure because it's possible he grew, he just got old. And he just didn't have it in him to do it anymore. A lot of people say like you lose testosterone when you're past fifty. Maybe he just got soft. Maybe he just really loves his fucking puppies and Beth's animal shelter and all that kind of shit. I mean, I don't know, but I really think he is also very scared about getting attacked in the media. Because if it if he ever was. Yeah, I think it would just open the door and just snowball. Like, oh yeah, Stern, remember he did this, he did that too, he did all these things. Like, it would ruin him if if he ever just caught that little first kind of hit. I, my whole thing is uh, when that evil human uh, Lena Dunham was on, I hate that bitch. Yeah, he, he shaved John Apatow. That's what her face is. And <laughs> even on Stern show, and she's like. Howard, I just want to thank you for being such a mm. feminist and a supporter of women. And it's like, oh, take out your big boobies. Oh. <laughs> no. 
they used to literally have women come into the room in bikinis and underwear so he could judge them and they would laser point at the bodies and go, Oh, you've got fat hair and you need the, these tits need to be bigger. And it's like, oh, is that a feminist? Yeah, he he I well, now Stern's kind of a feminist himself. Like he's just I think it's a oh, very fake. I really do believe that everything he did at the beginning was the way he wanted to do radio and what he was into. And now it's all just fear of the media. That's really what I think. But I mean, who knows? Maybe he was. Maybe he was a bullshitter. Maybe he engineered all of it. I, I think there's a chat. Uh, there was because uh, when you hear the stories about O and A, yeah, the, the run-ins of Stern that makes you realize. Uh, well, maybe he was always like what he's like now. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you do hear a lot of like uh, weird stories about like Stern with the porn stars and all that shit. But but then at the same time. Stern's interviews with guys like Norm and stuff, like some of the most rewatchable, like, eh, Howard, uh, I don't like the way you uh, treated Artie Lang, but uh, <laughs> it's yours, you know? Uh, uh, where, where, where's Zane Z? Uh, he pissed on the floor, uh, uh, dirty guy. He's a dirty dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can go back and watch some of the Howard TV, especially Artie, like, I, it's so easy to get into those fights and stuff. Artie's fights are some of the best fucking radio. It's just like some of the best. That stuff for him going after the the uh, the assistant. Oh yeah, he threw the CD at him. To me, that was the peak of uh, satellite hard stern. Like it never got better than that. No, it didn't. And it was all Artie. Like you got to give him credit for that. I mean, it wasn't really something already engineered probably he didn't want to look that way like looking back on it but either way it was so entertaining chemically engineered yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah you he ever heard the um already addiction saga it's like a 24 hour oh it's one of the best it's so good yeah i, I remember seeing the the video montage that somebody made of him to uh Hurt by uh, Nine Inch Nails. Yep. It's still up. Christ. Like, yeah. Visibly see him uh, going through mental health problems, which is cr uh, crazy. Yep. But the, the thing about Artie that's amazing is, um, like, I'm only 33, and yep. a lot of my party and stuff, it's, it's kicked the shit out of me to the point where, like, if I have a big, proper night out, I'll, I'll probably yep. take four days to get over it and even at that I'll take like a two week break mm -hmm. and Artie's uh, what in his mid 50s now and he's still at that shit I, I don't understand how have you seen his nose it looks like my ball bag <laughs> <laughs> it really he looks like he's got a clown nose it's like how do you not look at yourself in the mirror and say like alright this is done like I can't be doing anything else but yeah He's got to still be putting stuff in there. But you know what makes me worried for him is, it, do you remember the way Artie used to talk about how he had that dirty cop friend who would get yeah. him all the, the, that drug stuff? Well, if you look yeah. at Twitter about three, four days ago, Artie tweeted a picture of him in a comedy club with uh, Bob Levy and some woman. And if you look at yeah. him behind him, you can see the uh, the dirty cop guy taking pictures. So Artie's back with that guy. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's amazing he's not dead. Seriously, like, no overdose, no... I don't get how that's possible. He's not in good health, obviously, physically, either. Yeah, and he's, he's a big dude. Every sort of hard... Like, he's got every sort of physical problem. You know what the weird thing is about Artie? He's handsome. Wow. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he when he was young, when he was mad TV and all that, he was like a good looking, like Italian looking dude. Mm. And it just ugh. He was always kind of bigger, like you could tell, like he was he was almost like waiting to be fat. Oh god. You know what I mean? Like he but, uh, he, he shimmered himself. He didn't he lost, he blew up. What do you, you think is going to happen? Artie Lang makes it to 70 or Amy Schumer writes two jokes by herself? <laughs> I think Artie makes it to 70. Uh, can I be honest with you? I, I can time travel. 
<laughs> and I found out one of Amy Schumer's uh, original jokes. I'll not tell you the joke, but you like to hear the punchline? What? My vagina. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Even it's... South Park. Even South Park went in on that. But it's... <laughs> uh. <laughs> Fucking uh. Cartman going, okay, Wendy, be funny. Say something funny. Talk about your vagina. <laughs> 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 oh, my See, have you seen her film Snatched? Uh, I've seen little parts of it. I can't remember where I like. I think I, I didn't see the, only the preview. I saw some scenes too. I think we were watching it one time, like on one of those things where everyone's synced together and you can watch it. And it was just, it's just embarrassing. Like, I think she's kind of on the downturn. I honestly think like she pissed off so many people and she's just, she's just annoying that. I think she's really headed out, but I could be wrong. And but the thing, the thing about her, she's made jokes about rape and racist jokes in the past. Oh yeah, yeah. like the, the one where she said um, she loves sex with Hispanic men, especially when it's consensual. It's like what the fuck you say? Yeah. That, that's the sort of stuff that Trump would tweet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, what? yeah, she when when she came on ONA, do you remember in like 2010? She was loved. She was like, oh, everyone was like, this is the only comedian. It's not a whole. Like, we like Amy Schumer. And then it just really went full 180. I, I honestly never liked her because I remember she used to get these photos taken where she would have, be, like, in a short dress but, like, pulling this like, silly face. And it's like, I bet you could work that pose out for an hour just to make sure your body looks good while doing this. I don't huh. care. My vagina smells. <laughs> yeah but she, yeah, she's she's something else the, the thing about uh, uh rape jokes though would you want to hear the one because i'll be honestly uh i haven't heard many of them but the few that i have heard uh i don't like them but do you want to hear uh one that i found funny sure so there's this guy uh, he marries this woman she's like a 10 out of 10 gorgeous but she never wants to have sex with him ever. And right. he buys her for her look. She's this terrible personality. So he comes home one day from work. She's passed out on the floor and her skirt's lifted up and her underwear's down. So he's thinking, right, there's no way I'm going to miss an opportunity like this. So he went out drinking with his friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's an Amy Schumer joke? No, God, no. Oh, okay. okay. They're not allowed in this house, in this country. <laughs> but uh, I've also I've also heard a a racist one that I that I like. That's kind of because uh, the thing we should end on a good racist joke, you know, for the to keep the good vibe going. Right. So uh, this guy, this uh, African American gentleman, is chased into a Starbucks by a gang uh, of. Nazi skinheads and there's like six of them and they've got these pipes and baseball bats and they get the poor guy and they're just beating the crap out of him and they just really just kick the guy's head in so afterwards the police come and they go to the uh, to the manager and they say hey uh, why didn't you help out and then the manager goes well I thought six was enough <laughs> I bet Starbucks loves that I'm from Ireland say can you say uh my arse is killing me. That that's usually the key to Irish accent. My my arse is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, Tap Pattern. I love talking to you too. You probably wonder why my voice sounds so different right now. Well, I am so hungover. I was out last night. I'm editing this on about three hours sleep. Episode three will be coming soon enough. I hope if we can get the right guests, you know what I'm talking about. So it's usually. Bye-bye.